everyone, how's it going? So today's Monday Q&A question is one that I get quite a lot, but I'm addressing this one specifically that I got through Instagram. This question comes from Casey Nina and she asks, did you have any doubts about your age when starting medicine? And I think last week's question was also from Casey Nina. I think I must have saved these onto my phone a while ago. But yeah, so that's the question. As I said, because I'm a graduate, I get this question quite a lot from other students who are also graduates and thinking about applying to medicine. I'm going to try and give you guys my own personal answer, but also talk a little bit about the topic of age in medicine in general. So I guess, did I have any personal doubts when it comes to my age in medicine. To be honest, no, not really. That's not to say that I didn't have certain concerns. So for example, if I didn't get in this year or maybe I didn't get in the year after that, like how long would I keep trying for? There were all of those concerns, but did I have any doubts about my age? No. I think the question that comes up is, are you too old? And I kind of just think, well, too old for what? For some people they say, well, are you not too old to start all over again? And my personal answer for that is not really. For me personally, I have acknowledged that I have taken a longer route, but I would also argue that the longer route is often the more scenic route. I started my course last year when I was 25. So the way that things panned out in my journey, I didn't always know I wanted to do medicine. I thought that I wanted to go and do a PhD and go down the research route. So my trajectory towards medicine started when I did my biomedical sciences degree and then afterwards I went and did my masters and I think that's when I sort of thought actually I want to do medicine as opposed to a PhD. But after that I worked for two years as a research assistant and only then did I start medicine. And you know what? I wouldn't change it. On my course at the moment, which is a graduate course at the University of Birmingham, the age range is between 22 and I want to say 37. I hope I'm right about that, <laughs> but that's the age range. We have a certain number of students who came straight onto this course after finishing their undergrad, but for a lot of other students, we've all taken certain time out to either do a master's or just work for a bit or even like travel and do those sorts of stuff before coming and starting the course. But you know what, let's just dig into some of the concerns people have, because typically I tend to find that the kind of people who ask the question of, are you not too old for medicine? Or at what age should you, you know, what age is too old? I think the, the people who ask those questions typically tend to fall in one of three categories. Now the first category of people are the 18 year olds who wanted to do medicine like straight as their first degree but unfortunately were not successful and as a backup option are considering going and doing an undergraduate first and then medicine after. And it does make me smile a little bit because sometimes I get questions from someone who's like 21 and they're like, am I too old to go and do medicine? And here's me at like 26 now and a bunch of other people on my course who are around the same age where we're just like, no, you're fine. 21 is, you're fine, you're not too old. The second category of people who ask these questions are people like myself who are graduates and they are thinking about going and doing medicine but they sort of think, well, am I too old? Maybe they're married, maybe they have a family or maybe they have started a certain career path. And because of that, they kind of think, well, is it just going to be like just me full of lots of other like 21 year olds, especially if they're in their 30s. And the third category of people are the people who are friends, colleagues or relatives of the person who actually wants to apply to medicine. And a lot of the concerns that these individuals have is what about starting a family or what about the fact that you're not going to be like employed for another four to five years and those sorts of questions and concerns that they tend to bring up. Now I'm going to get into all of those concerns and kind of share with you my perspective on it. But before I do, I want to let you guys know that I have recently started a Redbubble shop and I am starting to put some of my designs and you can see some of them in the background here on a bunch of products. So if you're interested in something like that, then I will leave the link below and by all means go and check it out. All right, so with that said, let's get into some of the concerns that I hear quite regularly. Firstly, I want to address the 18 year old students who wanted to do medicine initially, but because maybe they didn't get in or what, through whatever other circumstance, they want to do an undergraduate course first and then followed by a graduate medical course. Now to these people, what I would say to you guys is that it may seem like you're three years older, but actually I would say that having those three years to kind of mature and get a lot of the new experiences, so the new experience of living away from home or the new experiences of going out and partying and making friends, getting all of those 
I guess, out of the way, if you like, before starting medicine is not always a bad thing because it just means that once you start the graduate course, you do tend to enter it with a little bit more life experience, with a little bit more maturity, and that can help you go a long way. And as I said, objectively speaking, starting the course at 21 or 22 or even up to the age of 37 in our case, is not that old. It's not old at all. In fact, this is the way that the medical training system works in America. I think all medical courses over there are graduates. So people tend to typically do three or four years of majoring in a certain subject first before going to do medical school. And I don't know too much about the system there, like that's as much as my knowledge goes. But when I can think about my own experience, I wasn't mature enough for medicine when I was 18. So this is quite a personal note for me, but because of that, I don't regret doing this as a graduate. And I think having that time to do biomed and get familiar with the rest of life, I suppose, was a really big stepping stone for me. The next thing, and this is probably one of the biggest things that the girls who I speak to or the women I speak to share as being one of their concerns. And, and don't get me wrong, guys have the same concerns too, but I think it's a little bit more prevalent amongst the women. And that is, like, when are you going to have time to start a family? Now, it is true that one of the cons of doing graduate medicine, especially if you're typically around, like, my age, between, I don't know, 25 to 35, is that the peak of your career, and I'm not even talking about medical school, but like the peak of your career, which in my case might be in around, I don't know, I don't even know when that'll be, I don't know how the trajectories work, but let's just go with it. The peak of your career may coincide with the time that you want to start a family. So that will make things a little bit more tricky. Not impossible, because I have spoken to a lot of people who, who actually have children while they're on the graduate course. So I do acknowledge that as being a con and as being kind of something that does make things a little bit more tricky but I would say that it's by no means impossible and the counter to that con is that the NHS is quite good when it comes to maternity leave or giving support and and I think medical schools are too and it isn't unheard of for people to take certain amount of time out to start a family while they're undergoing medical school. So this is something that I can't necessarily comment on from a personal standpoint but what I have heard from certain people around me is that it can be doable, you just have to figure out the logistics and you just have to plan in a way that works for you. The third concern that people often tend to have is, well, you know, if I start later, it means that it's just going to take me longer to become a consultant, or it's going to take me longer to get to the top of my field. And yes, I guess, objectively, if you think about it, there is a bit of truth to that, but the thing that I would question is, What's the rush? I mean, perhaps take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt because, again, this is something that may come across from a lack of experience. But nevertheless, I think it is valid to ask yourself if age is an issue. Why does it matter to you so much that you become a consultant really quickly? I think there is a bit of a misconception with medicine that you are working towards becoming a consultant and once you are a consultant, then like you've made it, you can just stop. But that's not how things work generally. With medicine, it's always progressive. And even if you do become a consultant, then there are always going to be next steps for you to do and, you know, things to work on, projects to grow or whatever. And because of that, I would just ask, what's the rush? But this is, I think, going to be the point that will probably divide people the most in this video. So if you are a consultant or if you are a junior doctor and have some opinions on this matter, leave your thoughts below because I personally would like to get a bit more information and get a bit more insight. Having said that, that's just my point of view. Finally, the last concern is about the whole topic of expectation and what you should be doing at a certain age. Now, again, this is something that goes through my mind quite regularly, and I'm sure a lot of other graduates may have had this question, where you sort of look at different people in your life who are around the same age, and their choices and their trajectories have taken them to maybe a different route and that route may look like a steady job maybe a lot of them have started purchasing houses or they have started families and then there is this expectation of you should be doing those things by a certain age and again my argument to that would be it's very very dependent on the individual and I think it's really really important to know your own values and what matters to you and why you want to go and do medicine because that will sort of stop you from being really affected by the external voices or the external influences that you may get from people around you and oftentimes if people do advise and say certain things as I said one of the categories of people with concerns are the 
colleagues and friends and families of the person who's applying, the majority of time it just comes from a caring and supportive place. But I know that a lot of this also does come from, I guess, a societal standard that you should be earning a certain amount by this age, or you should have a house by this age, or you should start a family by this age. And I know that that can be quite pressurising. But if you think that going and studying graduate medicine is the right decision for you, then by all means take it. And actually a note on that for any of the 18 year olds who are hoping to go and study an undergraduate course first before medicine. As I said earlier, you can take this time of doing your undergraduate degree to do the travelling, to do the fun stuff, to go and explore, to do and go and get part time jobs and do voluntary experience and enjoy that early part of your 20s before starting medicine. Like, I don't think there is a right or wrong way, I think it just really depends on what suits you. Because another pattern that I've noticed is that a lot of students who went and did medicine right from the beginning, so they went and did medicine like from when they were 18 until 23 I believe, and then they had to do like um, foundation training after that. A lot of those people, because they've spent such a long time in intense education, they end up taking a year or a couple of years out to go and do all of the travelling and the having fun and the partying or whatever. So that's another thing to bear in mind. There's no right or wrong, you're not too old, it just really depends on you as an individual. So I guess the biggest takeaway message I would say from this video is that do you think you're too old for graduate medicine? If so, why? Is it worth questioning some of those beliefs? There might be some truth to them, for example, but I think without fully questioning them and without fully understanding why you think that you're too old, you're not really going to be satisfied with making a decision either to study medicine or not to. But to answer the question generally, is there a set age where you just become too old? I don't think so. But again, this could be completely open to debate, so if you guys have a different perspective on it, share it with me below. And that's it for this week guys, I hope this has been informative and as I said, if you would like to check out my Redbubble shop then I will leave links for that below. And if you have another question that you would like me to answer then either leave it below or message me on Instagram and I can include them in the future. So until next time, take care and I will see you later.